We want to talk about the issues that are important to the people that are listening to you daily. We'll ask a pointed question. Each of you will have then 30 seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> 30 seconds to respond, or that bell comes out, or gets a ding. Uh, and then there'll be a two-minute discussion after. So that's where you can really kind of get into it. All right? So we're ready for the first question. All right. Uh, most questions will be followed by a lightning round. In the lightning round, each host may provide a 15-second response. Are you ready? You I think we should do one? it. All right, here we go. Let's start with Michael Brown. After the terrorist attack in Libya, Ambassador Chris Stevens, as you know, and three others were killed, attempted bomb plot at the Federal Reserve in New York, the question a lot of people want to know is which presidential candidate can keep us safer over the next four years? You have 30 seconds each. Your time begins now. Well, considering that Barack Obama and his staff lied about it for several weeks, you can't trust them to tell us the truth about what's going on. I think the one thing that you can, you can rely upon Mitt Romney for, and I'll criticize him if he doesn't do this, is to at least shoot straight with us about what's going on. You want to go down the line, John? We haven't had a United States diplomat killed overseas since Jimmy Carter. I think that's very telling. Uh, it's, it's obvious Mitt Romney is the, the single choice for, for American security uh, during this time. I, I, I feel like we're living through the Carter years, and I'm waiting for a botched hostage rescue attempt. You need to find them. Help. You need some hostages first. Tom. I don't think the president matters as much as his appointments. The problem with presidents is they put buddies who have helped them get elected into these positions that uh, protect our asses. And I think what they have to do are put people in those positions who have knowledge about those positions. So I don't think it much matters as long as they pick the right people to do the job. Well, you, better, you, better, you better watch out. The last Republican president chose this man, so. I believe. What side are you on, John? That's Zinger and he number did. one. Yeah. <laughs> Zinger number one. All right, Norm, 30 I seconds, did Norm. A job, but a heck of a job. Heck of a, a heck of a job. job. 30, 30 seconds, Norm. Job. Norm. Under George <laughs> W. Bush, speak of the devil. 3,000 Americans died on September 11th, 2001. Then Dick Cheney went to the CIA and compelled them to cook up a bunch of lies to invade okay. Iraq. That's 4,000 more dead Americans. And now we're hearing a lot of crocodile tears about four dead Americans when there's an obvious, let me use the word tumult, when there's tumult in, in Benghazi. You guys have to play by the same rules. You can't give me a bunch of crocodile tears over four dead Americans and give a pass to 7,000 dead Americans and a 12-year debacle in Afghanistan that this president is ending. All right. Two-minute discussion. We open it up for two minutes here. Well, the bottom line of the thing is that uh, there's a huge bureaucracy in government. I mean, let's be honest here. And so there's obviously cables coming in from all over the world all the time, going into the State Department. The State Department's a massive bureaucracy. To believe that in a lightning fast time period, a cable from Benghazi whoa, whoa, is gonna whoa, end up whoa, whoa, on the president's norm, desk norm, is born. It just norm. goes through hey, channels, norm. that's the way it norm, works. Let me, ask you a question. let me ask you a question. Have you ever been in the Situation Room live I've never drowned a major American city either, Mike. Well, neither have I. But I'll tell you what, those cables, those cables that, we'll, we'll talk about that if, if Norm wants to. Those cables that came into the State Department, I know from experience, are read in the Situation Room instantaneously. They don't go just to the State Department, they go to the Situation Room also. And Whammo and Wacko and all the other people, those are acronyms for official people. Yeah, seven hours to tell the president. I go back to Hillary's 3 a.m. Hell, he didn't even answer the call at 6 p.m., let alone 3 a.m. Fellas? John, you want a piece of that? I want to say this as sensitively as possible. Uh-oh. I was completely serious about there being no booze backstage. <laughs> Get 
have and a out of a crowd of this size to think that no one has brought us booze yet <laughs> really speaks ill, not only of talk radio, but of the whole Denver community. <laughs> oh, and, and, and what he said. <laughs> I really thought it was YouTube for a long time. Why is that? You thought what was YouTube? The problems at the embassy. Yeah, that's right. The movie. Called. You're talking about the film. Yes, the YouTube film. Yeah. That's what I was And that was propagated. You know, but it's funny because the CIA now is saying that there actually was a demonstration. That was their initial assessment. And they're making that same assessment now. Hey, if you guys are going to go with the CIA to invade Iraq on lies, you're going to live with the CIA now. You don't get to pick your facts because they fit your predetermined notions, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's just live with the... That's it. You're going to have to live with the CIA under George W. Bush and under Barack Obama. Okay, uh, no, 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 a, a quick Ooh. one. A quick one. Okay. I joked about I joked about the, the botched uh, attempt with um, um, Jimmy Carter, but during that botched attempt, I remember as a kid that evening he faced the cameras in the Oval Office, took responsibility, looked us in the eye, and said, "It is my fault." I'm not seeing this at all from the man who wants another four years. And that's exactly what Obama did when Mitt Romney confronted him. That's it. All your hooting and hollering, don't change the facts. He said, I am responsible. And Romney then went out there and said, you didn't say the words terrorist act. And Candy hey, Crowley gave him a face hey, plant you, you know right what? there on the, on the feel, in front of like 60 I'm million people. I feel like my whole show over she here. She did apologize for Instead doing of Sirota, I got Norm. Our, is our two minutes up? Yeah, our two minutes is up. We're gonna yeah, move two on minutes to, ago. We're going to move on to the lightning round, which is 15-second responses to each of these quick questions. Um, let's see, Keystone Oil Pipeline, like it or not? I want to hear from Tom Martino on that one. Yes, I think that we need to explore um, other <laughs> energy sources. <laughs> Here you go, brother. That's a true fan. It's too bad he's a bug you, man. Is are you it? a fan or did you put something in that? It's too bad somebody spit in it, but what the hell. <laughs> did you put an orange in there? He's a happy man. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> Gin and tonic. Well, <laughs> hey, ma'am. There goes my 15 seconds. Ma'am, uh, Jack forget and Diet, please. please. <laughs> I think we have to explore alternate uh, means of energy, but I think that the pipeline <laughs> is a good idea. Okay. Thank no, you thanks. again. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you, Tom. If you have a joint now, that oh, might be wait. different. Uh, oh, we're, we're going to get to that. Amendment 64, Amendment 64. The, the more I drink, the more sense Norm makes. <laughs> and the more I smoke, the more sense you make. Wow. Hey, here's the funniest part. We were at the Comedy Works last year, and we thought we'd get away from that to reduce the alcohol consumption. <laughs> wow. That was a two-drink minimum. <laughs> This is a four-drink minimum. All right, uh, let's move on. Give President Obama a grade That's for his true. four years in office. Let's go down the line, starting with you, Norm. Uh, I give him a C. He's not a real Democrat. He's a moderate Republican. <laughs> he... <laughs> it's a measure of how extreme America has gotten and how weird America has gotten. <laughs> Time. That Time. When, yeah. Time. When a real Democrat Michael. shows up, you don't recognize him. Michael, go ahead. Michael. Oh, a grade? Yep. I can't give him a grade because he never showed up. Do you remember when, uh, let's see, Dean Wormer came over and looked at John Belushi and said, a perfect 0.0. 0. .0. Zero. <laughs> uh, Martino, do you have a grade for the president last four years in office? I would say a D. Uh, I think that uh, there's not much difference uh, between candidates usually, and uh, he did not inspire me. He's not a leader that I look up to because he apologizes too much. Wow. <laughs> One speech in <laughs> Egypt, and you've turned it into a whole four-year oh. thing. One speech Chicken. in Egypt. Uh, Amazing. Is there any doubt that America will get hit with another terrorist attack? This is a huge question, but sorry, 15 seconds. Let's start with Michael. Yeah, yes, we will. And I don't know what form it will take. And gosh, you guys got quiet all of a sudden. But I, I think what we fail to understand in this country is that we are under attack every single day. There are people in this world 
that do not believe in what we believe in. I mean, look at this audience. We've got Republicans, Democrats, Independents, we've got women, we've got men, we've got religions of all faiths, everything in this room, and we're having fun, and we're speaking freely about political issues. There are people in the world that do not want that. Of course, there'll be another major terrorist attack. The thing is, it'll be where we least expect it, when we least expect it. Right. And everything that we prepare for, it's sad that once there's one attack, we go backwards and try to stop that attack. TSA is not needed the way it is. We need to think of what the next one's going to be. Tom, are we going to get hit again? I think it's inevitable, and it is the price of freedom, because we don't, uh, we don't clamp down on society, and I hope that we continue pretty good deal. to uh, mm -hmm. not sacrifice our freedom for safety. I think this one's yours. I think, I Tom, it idea. makes a lot of sense, but let me remind you of Timothy McVeigh and the Oklahoma City bombing. That was obviously a terrorist act, and it was done by Americans on American soil. Uh, terrorism has lots of different faces and viewpoints. Uh, we have marauded around this planet, throwing our weight around, invading at will, and creating a lot of enemies. And Donald Rumsfeld asked in May of 2003, are we killing and deterring more terrorists than we are creating? When Donald Rumsfeld is asking that question, that really ought to tell you that you need to not throw your weight around so much, and maybe they won't come out here and try and hit you back. Donald's awesome! Who invited how much, him? How much has he had to drink? <laughs> <laughs> Who invited him? He's, All right, he's, we're he's moving on. He's on the third station, don't worry about it. We are moving on to our next... You're on um, the third station? No, you. To our next major question. Uh, moving on to education. Can't we all just get along? With more than half of today's college grads underemployed or even unemployed and the cost of higher ed on the rise, is college worth the cost in this day and age? Let's start with John. It wasn't for me. Obvious, <laughs> obviously. That's for sure. <laughs> Listen, well, we need some place where, you know, 18 to, in my case, 28-year-olds can go <laughs> for a few years to chase skirts, drink a lot, and not get anything done. And I think there's a cheaper way of doing that than through our higher education system now. It needs to be kind of a later years daycare center where it's a constant sleepover. Other than that, no, the return on investment from particularly liberal arts education is not worth it. And that's why we're going to see in the future all sorts of different alternatives to a liberal arts degree. I think we're going to see people specializing in specialty schools. Um, and I think there's an old guard that loves the Ivy League in their, their college days. I'm not among them. No. The rise of the for-profit colleges has drowned American students in debt, and that is a major problem. Unlike, uh, unlike they, the president. They ha well. <laughs> That is, that is your crony capitalism run wild, and they are feasting on taxpayer money. Your taxpayer dollars are going into the pockets of all these great capitalists. So, so understand that this world is getting a lot more complicated, and if you want a race to the bottom where you have everybody assembling iPads by hand, then you better get an education because the world's changing fast, and you're going to need an education and a quality one at that. Martina. I think we could condense uh, junior college and high school into a few years because we don't learn much. And I think in college, we have too much of an emphasis on ideals and ideas and not skills. College teaches no skills at all. So you come out of college and you have to learn on the job. Now there is one way college can pay if you hide your records and run for office. <laughs> Whoa! Touche Martina. You, you can get the rich white guy to offer you $5 million to show him. Wow. And, the, uh, the, and the college records are in the same place with the tax returns, right, Tom? Oh. They're in exactly the same hidden place with the tax returns. Wow. How about you, Michael? I think college is worth it, but the problem is Colleges are so infestated with this liberal mentality. There's, there's a study I just read that talks about like something like 
85% of all colleges only teach like three out of the 10 really basics that you need to learn. So it's, it's become a waste for many people. And I think we need to get more focused on technical education, the real, I mean, yeah. let's go back to the basics, reading, skills. writing, and arithmetic, skills and doing that sort of thing, as opposed to basket weaving or some sort of feminist gender, you know, hoopla boola, who, you know, makes no sense. Is that everybody? All right. Aren't you keeping track? I'm trying. Now that we get 30 <laughs> seconds was thrown out a long time ago. Let's have another two minutes for discussion if All right, you'd like I'll, on this. Go ahead, yeah, Tom. Yeah, I'd like to start because he mentioned tax returns. You know what makes me sick is when they talk about Romney paying 14%, which is the law for capital gains. Any person in the world can voluntarily pay more, including your hero, Romney. Warren Buffett could pay more, but he didn't. Instead, what Warren Buffett did is he complained. He complained about not paying enough tax, and there is a place on your tax return to voluntarily pay more. The law right. says with capital gains, you pay 14 to 15 percent plus whatever your state is, and it says on salary, you pay whatever tax rate you're in. He was following the law. Now, no, Obama, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He, yes, he, he was. should have paid 9 percent because he didn't take every deduction right, he could have taken in fact, because right. he had said that he had always paid well, 13% or that's more. Good. He, he should have paid 9% because he, the tax code's a disgrace he, because it's it great is. for the it people at the top and we and, need a nice, clean, fair tax he, code. That's what we need. You're that's right. right. A flat he tax. Paid How about a flat more tax? More than he had to. Flat tax. More than Tom, to. no. You know what? Flat tax. You know what? Flat tax. What makes me sick no, is done. that liberals we're ride done. around in limousines feeling guilty and saying prayers, but the problem is they can voluntarily give to their government and they night? don't. It, it takes movie? one of you movie? guys yeah. to yeah. not you know the doing? difference between they charity they and yeah. taxation. Oh, she's I give yeah. money yeah. to charity. Yeah. That's, that's not good. Taxation is a whole different thing. This is not the debate we thought we would see. I thought Michael Brown would be. Apparently, Michael and John have some catching up to do. They had a buy this week, right? Yeah. Hey, you want to get a drink later? Oh, yes, do you go now? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, what? Oh. Hi, guys. What the hell are we talking about? We're still in the discussion. And discussion. Back. Here we go. My favorite part of all that was the question was education. education. The cost of, <laughs> of higher ed. Well, he brought up taxes. <laughs> yes. No. Here's the simple, uh, lightning simple way to do it. We need to educate our young kids. The best wrap, way to do that when they get out of college, up. give them the cash and let them go to any school they wish. Thank you, John. That's good. And, and teach children how to be not employees, but entrepreneurs. Woohoo! And teach everybody to take personal responsibility for themselves. What? Yeah. Well, did you tell Obama that? Okay, Obama's here we go. Obama's taking way more yeah. personal responsibility than you ever have. That dude came from nothing, and yeah, look he where did. he is now. Yeah. He That's is the Chicago American dream, do. my friend. You just don't like it. That's the American lightning dream. Round. Political connections lightning is the American round. dream. Is this lightning the lightning round? round? 15 this seconds is the lightning each. round. 15 seconds each. Let's start with uh, John Caldera. Yes, sir. Tax laws. Flat tax. Your thoughts. 15 seconds. Flat tax. Everyone pays the same. Get rid of as, as many deductions. Make those evil rich people get out of those deductions. And drug dealers should pay about the same as well. <laughs> and again... Thank you for the drug. <laughs> Michael Brown, 15 seconds, flat tax. Absolutely. The tax code is an abomination. Do a flat tax. Do a fair tax. Get rid of the deductions. Just everybody, look, everybody needs to have skin in the game. I don't care whether you make $10,000 a year, you make $10 million a year. Everybody pay something. All right, Norm. Not flat, but scaled with no deductions, no exemptions, scaled. A thousand dollars to somebody making ten grand means a whole lot more than a hundred grand to someone making a million. Simplicity is not analysis. Use your brains, okay? okay? If you're making ten grand, a thousand dollars means a lot. Simple Time. doesn't mean Time. good. Time. Wake up. And Tom. I am a weirdo when it comes to taxes. I'll agree with that. I believe. <laughs> in time tax, because everyone's time is all that they have. So take a time period, amortize a yearly income, and work three months for the government, because that's what the hell we're doing anyway. Okay. okay. And everyone does it. Next uh, lightning round question. Three, vice, uh, three presidential debates, one VP debate. 
15 seconds, we'll start with Norm. In your opinion, are these debates we're seeing important today to the political process? 15 Not at seconds. all. They're, they're theater. I mean, they're just theater. They really don't change many minds, and frankly, the, the debates need to be opened up to add the Libertarian Party candidate, Gary Johnson, the Green Party candidate, Jill Stein, Buddy Romer, the former Louisiana governor, former Democrat, former Republican, as well as Rocky Anderson and the Justice Party. They need more Great people time. on there with more points of view to give us, a, and Roseanne too. Get Roseanne, and get, <laughs> get a broader range of views because the Democrats and the Republicans are too often the same on issues like Great. taxation and Why is it liberals have to go over budget all the time? All 15 the time. seconds. 15 seconds. Michael Brown, 15 seconds or on norm time. Um, <laughs> 40. I love they, you, Norm. Look, they're, they're good for what they do, and they, they at least expose most people who are more interested in the Broncos or more interested in uh, American Idol or whatever that show is. So they're good in that sense, but I wish they'd change the format. I'd rather see a free-for-all like this. Yes. <laughs> Just get them in there, throw some questions out, let them have at it. Go Maybe ahead, give them a couple of drinks on stage. <laughs> yes. Very entertaining. Yeah. And see, uh, see what Romney does with that. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't are, say what kind. These are useful. Because it's the first time that we got to hear Mitt Romney unfiltered for an hour and a half to cut through the crap so people could get to know him. I think that was valuable. Yeah. Okay. Where he changed all his positions that he'd been running on for the last three years. And Tom, we'll wrap it up with you. I'd like to see a cage match. <laughs> <laughs> Let him just kick Run. each other's ass. Yeah. Because Paul Ryan would be president. <laughs> it's the P90X. Yeah. Okay, final lightning round question. There was a water joke in there and a 14er joke, but I, I just we've got to move on. Uh, what does America look like? We'll start with John. What does America and the world look like after another four years if the president wins re-election? I think productive people leave the country and the rest of it looks like Greece. Yes. Norm? Uh, the economy gets better. Jobs yeah. come back. It won't be as roaring. It won't be as roaring. Look, they ask a serious question, they give a serious answer. It won't be as roaring as the boom and the bust years because the last time we had the boom like the one we just had that went bust was the 1920s that gave us the Great Depression. So instead of these massive highs and lows, we're going to have more even. The highs will be lower, the lows will be higher. We're going to have a more even recovery Time. because that's what happens when you have a regulated economy. Tom. <laughs> Tom Martino. I had a, I, I've had a tough year. I want to be part of the 47%. <laughs> <laughs> no, just... What, what Instead I of think, the 1%? What, 47. <laughs> what I think is, as I really believe the president and, and I'm sorry, does not make that much difference to swing our country. And I think that we're going to continue to recover anyway, but not because of him, in spite of him. Okay. And Congress. In spite of Congress. Right. In and spite final, of the government. Right. Final uh, 15 seconds-ish uh, to Michael Brown. The, the president does make a difference because in this case, the president abdicated all responsibility to Congress. This $20 bill in four years, Maybe a buck. He's loaded. Maybe a buck. <laughs> Typical Caldera. Typical Caldera. I really think that if, if we get four more years of Obama in a Democratic Congress and Senate, the country is doomed. I think we're doomed. What'd you do? You mean the way the country was doomed after six years of George W. Bush and a Republican dominated both houses of Congress? The way we were sunk into another depression and uh, two wars and all this debt you guys ran up? You mean that kind of hey, stuff? You know, you know oh, what? Are we, are we in an open discussion? No. I want to be in an open no. discussion. We, no, we can't get away with that without a comment. Yeah, let, 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 I'm gonna, Dorm has a point, and I'm serious about this. When Republicans controlled the White House and both branches of Congress, they acted like Democrats on yes. drugs. Yes. And they should and take they, responsibility should, for and it. And they started a, uh, under, under George. George W., the rate of growth in government grew faster than that under LBJ. We need to be ashamed of that as Republicans. Yes. And when Republicans do get in control again, it is those of us in this room that need to hold their feet to the fire to act like Republicans. Give me five. There you go. Is this? All right, listen. Now that's a lightning round for you. That's pretty good. 
we, we got to say something. Okay, you know, go ahead. Bottom son. line is he keeps talking about Bush and, and, and Obama. Do you realize that we can all dislike Bush and still dislike Obama? I and do. And we can like I do. Romney. So, I so, do. You know, you, because we dislike Obama doesn't mean we loved Bush. It means it went from bad to worse. That's what the, No, Tom, what you need to understand is, is that you and so many of your friends are working off of preconceived notions that are false. And that if you were to actually give me a good listen, you would find that there's tremendous common ground amongst all the Americans on tax fairness, on legalizing marijuana, on getting rid of cr crony corporate capitalism, on knocking there's, down these trade ridiculous trade things with China. There's not enough in the country to give you a good listen. Well, there's not enough alcohol in here to make sense out of you, John. So, okay, we got to move on to our next topic. Yep. Okay, and uh, it's a good Just segue. Just we're getting warmed up. Sorry, it's a good place to move take on. this. Uh, one of the bigger issues, we have, marijuana has been mentioned a couple of times up here. Colorado voters, as you know, Amendment 64 is on the ballot. Should we treat marijuana like alcohol? I will start with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, n nothing meant by that. No matter what happens with Amendment 64, I want to be at their headquarters for the after party. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in reality, with a big lighter, in reality, I think less government's better. Uh, marijuana should be legalized, but here's my problem with marijuana. And I did inhale. The, the problem <laughs> is dosing. This you work? can take a couple hits one day and not feel much, and a couple hits the next day and be on your ass. Now that's a problem, and I'm serious. If you're going to regulate something, you have to do more than regulate the distribution. You have to regulate the quality and the dosing, or it's dangerous. Just like alcohol. Okay, uh, tobacco. You sound like you know what you're we'll talking get into about. The, we'll get into the discussion well, point after, and thank you, Tom. We'll go down to uh, Michael. On Amendment 64, should we treat marijuana like alcohol? Yeah, I, I, I agree with William F. Buckley, who back in 1996 advocated for the legalization of drugs and the regulation of drugs. I think Amendment 64 is a poorly written amendment. We're putting one more thing in the Constitution, but I will tell you, I've already voted, and I voted yes on Amendment 64, because I believe that this whole drug war is a failure, and it is creating a police state in this country. And I think, for those of you... For those of you who are conservative that ripped me apart on the show over this issue, are you truly a conservative when you're advocating for bigger government, more of a police state, and regulating something that is no different than John Hickenlooper's favorite beverage? Okay, we'll get into the discussion. Uh, John Caldera. We know where he Mar stands. Marijuana is, is important because it's the only way you can listen to Sirota. <laughs> <laughs> 64 is going to 64 is going to fail it's poorly written but you're going to see that it's gaining from about six years ago and it only got 40 percent of the vote yes of course it needs to be legalized and you know what as, as far as dosing uh, consumers have a good way of figuring out what works and what doesn't uh, one let <laughs> one one it uh, it'll be fine It'll be just fine. Okay, I've, never, uh, I've, never seen, I've never seen people sh have a shootout over a Coors Light delivery truck. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, but uh, we don't, Norm. we don't, we don't we, we have any... get, let, Tom, let's get to Norm oh, first, okay. and then we'll open the All discussion. Right, you're right. It's an issue of freedom and liberty. Big nanny state government has no business telling me what to put inside my body. Unless if it's I, Obamacare. If I choose yeah. to... <laughs> Or a, whole, or a whole bunch of vaginal probes there, Brownie. Wow. A whole bunch of vaginal probes for women who just want to talk to their doctor. As I was saying, if you're going to declare yourself what the hell did that a freedom-loving American, <laughs> if you're going to declare yourself a freedom-loving American and you're going to say you want to keep us safe from terrorism, Federal agents have no business busting marijuana shops. They Imaginal need to be going be after the terrorists. And we need the tax revenue. We need the tax revenue. 
and it makes absolutely no sense. It makes a mockery of the law for the teenagers right. to say that booze is legal, cigarettes are legal, and reefer is not. Michael, did you want to jump in there? As you were saying, Free what? I think Vaginal Probe would be a good name for a rock band. <laughs> it probably is already somewhere in a garage. They're actually opening up for Pussy Riot. But <laughs> 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 um, bum. Thank you. Easy. You know what? We've, we've discussed. We've discussed. <laughs> it's my mother the watching round. tonight. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the lightning round. Um, if you had the ear of whomever becomes president for the next four years, would you tell him? What would you tell him to do in the first 100 days, John? Vaginal probe. <laughs> Quite simply, I would tell him to, to work on uh, Obamacare, repeal it, replace it, get it out of there, and pull back the regulatory state. Is that doable in the first 100 days? I know that's not what you would choose to do, but... Well, I mean, they can do it if they have a simple majority in the Senate and they have the House and they have the White House. They can defund Obamacare, basically gut it from the inside without formally repealing it by using the reconciliation process of the Senate to end run the filibuster. I mean, that's you asked me a straight question. I gave what you a straight answer. Like, yes, what they, would you like to see in the first 100 days? Well, in the first 100 days, I'd like to see whoever the president is look at Microsoft, look at Apple, and say, bring these jobs home. Stop sending our manufacturing base to China and India and Thailand and Pakistan. Bring the jobs home or we will impose tariffs on these goods and put American workers on a, fa on, a fa on a simple, basic playing field. All right. Michael Brown. Uh, I would tell the president, one, repeal Obamacare, cut, cut spending across the board, and even for all of us old folks, entitlements, everything, cut everything across the board by at least 5%. You would see this economy turn on a dime and soar like crazy, just showing that we had fiscal discipline. And vaginal probes. Tom Martino, what do you want to see in the first 100 days? Declare that you're going to run the government like a business. You can't spend, you cannot spend more than you take in. It's that simple or you're going out of business. You're a consumer advocate. If we bring all these jobs home, does my iPad go up to $2,000? No, but it'll go up some, and that's the problem, is that employment is directly related to hypocrisy. We say that we want to buy American. There is no doubt that if you have manufacturing in the U.S., American workers will not work for $4 a day. And you have to come to grips with that. But so we have, to make, we have to make up our minds that we're going to pay more if we do that. And we don't have, because right now we say we want more jobs, but we run to Walmart to save $5. Mm -hmm. yeah. we say, but you say it's, it's, work, it's not just workers. Norm, there's not some lever you switch to bring them back. If you were going to open up a factory, would you open it up in a place where you have union regulations, where you have lawyers who are going to sue you, who you have OSHA regulations that are costing you a bunch, Relax. you've got environmental right. regulations, you've got Obamacare, you've got costs right. galore, or would you go somewhere you where you're easy. free so John, to make it? Make it why do you so hate America? Jobs, if why you want do you jobs, hate America? If you because want you jobs, View people as commodities if to you suck all the value out of jobs, them. Remove the regulatory state and turn and this place the into back. the way it was 200 years ago. You hate America. You hate human beings. You want to exploit people. We have. You people need to listen to 760 from four to seven. We have a national minimum wage. The, Dem the Democrats made you all who you are, and you don't even say thank you. We have a national minimum wage, and we need an international minimum wage, because the all of you life is sacred people vote values. You should value the life in China, value the life in Thailand. Y'all have been brainwashed. Grow up. Love America. Hey, Norm. If hey, you Norm. so choose, AM 760, Norm. 4 p.m. Norm, Norm. Uh, I'm just sorry. I thought Norm loved liberty and freedom. I do. Yeah. Just not this economic, is the place economic, for economic it. freedom. <laughs> if anybody doesn't love America and freedom, you can have this dollar from Zimbabwe that I was given <laughs> on the way in. I'm not really sure. What, oh, actually, it's $100 trillion. It's $100 trillion? Anyone, trillion do, dollars? do you like that? You it's, sure it's not from Kenya? It's worth, <laughs> it's worth six cents. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
let's move on. Who, this is a great question. I think it'll enlighten us, and it will lighten things up just a little bit. Who's your political idol? Let's start with Michael Brown. Political idol. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. Okay. How about you, John? Margaret Thatcher. But that's just a sexual thing. <laughs> <laughs> It's those pink tweed dresses. Uh, how that about one's to you, Tom. <laughs> Modern day would be Ronald Reagan. Yeah. Um, old school would be Gandhi. Gandhi, wow. Two very diverse per personalities. But all with the same goal. Which is? Change with responsibility. Not change, we can believe it? Not hope <laughs> and change. <laughs> Change with responsibility. How about you, Norm? I'm done with hoping. Well, I don't Norm. know. There you go again. I, I, I don't recall. I, 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 I'd have to say Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who I campaigned for. Franklin Delano Roosevelt is the greatest president in this nation's history. <laughs> Plain and simple. He's my hero. All right. Man, oh man. Uh, move, moving it's on. That's all we need, more socialism. Continuing our lightning round, 15 seconds. Oh, yes. <laughs> 15 seconds. Yes. Uh, speaking of idols, who would you rather have a beer with, Peyton Manning or Tim Tebow? Tim Tebow! The ladies all want Tim Tebow. But... Well, I, I, is this for me? Sure. Well, I, I, Tim Tebow, but the problem is I don't think Tim drinks. So I, I'd have a glass of wine and offer Tim a Diet Coke. All right. Oh, good God. Tim Tebow, could you imagine a better wingman? Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> I would hate to see your wingman, John. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret Thatcher, John Caldera, and Tim Tebow. The, the there's iron, a, there's the an iron adult movie there somewhere. The Iron Lady meets Flaccid. <laughs> they walk into a bar. <laughs> okay, Tom? I think that... Um, <laughs> If I wanted to learn about football, it would be Manny with the no huddle offense. But I think that uh, Tebow probably because he has the courage to profess his faith without shame. Amen. How about you? Peyton Manning because he shows the value of perseverance. All right. Tebow doesn't? He hasn't done anything. Has he won four games? <laughs> All in the final minutes of those games. All right, moving on to our major question. You each get 30 seconds, and then we'll have that a discussion. That was kind of like a boxers or briefs question, wasn't yeah. it? Oh, that's coming. Is that the best you two could do? It's coming. Brittany who or Demi we, Lovato? Who says we made these things up? <laughs> these were listener-submitted questions. No, they were. The people want to know. Okay, the cost of social programs has become a hot topic of conversation in this election season. How do we keep paying for entitlement programs? We talked about this a little bit, but let's do uh, a little more. Let's start with Tom. I think the problem with entitlements are not entitlements, but those who qualify for entitlements. The problem we have is that there are many people taking advantage of entitlements who don't deserve it. I don't think, I don't think any one of us, I don't think any one of us want to exclude people in need. And I think our problem is the government does not, is not vigilant in providing services for those truly in need. So I would say that that's what we need to do. Okay. There is waste, fraud, and abuse on a massive scale throughout the government, throughout every program. It needs to be ferreted out. We need to honestly assess the needs of the government and say, just as Tom said, that there are people who are truly deserving, who need our help, and we have to make some difficult choices. And I think a trillion dollars a year on a global empire is definitely not a way to spend a trillion dollars a year. Mm. How about you, John? Even the word entitlement smacks of redistribution. I'm entitled to some, but something that somebody else has. Yes, we need a safety net, but once democracy, uh, the problem with democracy is once a majority of people realize they can vote themselves a raise, um, then it, it falls apart. We've now got a point where most people will be 
on entitlement programs, and they will want more than they put in. We need to get back what we put in. This is why uh, pension plans are going to fail. We need to switch over to a defined contribution plan, ultimately, so that when you put money into Social Security, it's your money and nobody else can take it. That would have worked out great three years ago. Michael. Uh, this, this entitlements are a form of totalitarianism. It's, it's taking my money and giving it to somebody else. I have a moral, and, and on my behalf, I have a religious obligation to take care of my family and to take care of those that I care about. It may be you or it may be you or you. And I do that through my church, through the Salvation Army or other places. And I guarantee you that if I give a dollar to the Salvation Army for them to help somebody, probably 95% of that dollar goes to help that individual. If I give a dollar in, I'm sorry, if the government extracts forcibly from me a dollar to provide something to somebody else, maybe 30 cents, and I'm being generous, of that actually gets to it. We need to recognize, and it's harsh, but it's true, the government cannot and is not compassionate. That is our responsibility. We need to do that. Entitlements lead to totalitarianism. I'm through that one. I got it. This is the time when we could do a little bit of discussion. Go ahead, Tom. First of all, Norm. charity worked in 1811 when America was a lot smaller and it was much more of a small community where you could take care of those in your community. America's got 300 plus million people, too big, too complicated. Charity ain't gonna do it, that's number one. Number two, the word entitlements, just so you, why don't you just simmer down and listen for a second. You might learn a thing or two. The word entitlement, the word entitlement comes from a court case in the 1960s where the Supreme Court of the United States said, you know, Congress sets out certain objective criteria, and if you meet those, then you are entitled to what that program is. That's where the word comes from. Social Security and Medicare are not entitlement programs. They are insurance policies. Just like you pay your auto insurance policy, and if you pay Allstate year in and year out or State Farm, and then you have an accident and you say, now it's time for you guys to pay back because I've been paying into you guys, all you these years. Uh, they say, yeah. sorry, all the money's gone. No. It's an insurance policy, and the entitlement program the is welfare. These yes. are not entitlements. If, <laughs> if, if State Farm yes. had the books that Hear Social me. Security has, they'd all be in Preach jail. It. Preach it, brother. Preach it. <laughs> um, Social, Security, Social Security is in trouble. Of the 16, of the 16 trillion dollar debt, how much is owed to Social Security? Do you know? Twelve trillion. So you see, our national debt is from taking from ourselves. So the Social Security fund is in trouble because we are running our deficits off of it. There's nothing wrong with the Social Security program if you leave it the hell alone. Let me ask, let me ask I you. Absolutely. We're in news. We're all in radio. How many in this audience, if you're not collecting Social Security, are worried about it not being there for you when you need it? By show of hands, maybe half the room? All right. We're going to move on because we're up against the clock here. Uh, Who we cares? Are gonna, we are going to have... <laughs> you never do in your show, you, Brandon. You, you realize cares. that the next round, they all get paid a lot more than I do. <laughs> so screw them. Let's redistribute it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Lightning round. We, need, we, we truly need to keep these to 15 seconds, but they're pretty good. We will start with John Caldera. Why, Why aren't me? women paid as much as men? Oh, this is going to be good. Because they're girls. <laughs> <laughs> the question is this. If, if women want to break the glass ceiling, the first thing they need is a friggin' job. And under this economy, more women are in poverty than they were four years ago. More women are unemployed than they were four years ago. Before they can earn more, they have to be able to get a job. This economy will not allow that to happen. Okay. I don't think we answered the question. I'm with her. I'm with her. Why are they paid less? For all sorts of reasons, including personal choices, including an economy that allows people to to uh, uh, pay a different wage. 
You know, if, if, if men took off time during childbearing years oh, the same way, there would be something there, there too. Okay, 15 seconds is up. Norm. <laughs> Norm, why aren't women paid as much as men? You have 15 seconds. Because there is discrimination. It is rooted in history. It is based in our culture. It is getting better. It's 83 cents on the dollar now. It was 73 cents some years ago. And women need to keep fighting. We need a woman president. We need more women senators and members of the House. We need more women in command and control positions at the, in charge of corporations. And pretty soon, okay, with the time. Lilly Ledbetter Act, we will have parity and equality for all, okay. which is America. Tom Martino. I kind of agree with him. There, there was discrimination. Women stayed at home primarily. As they entered the workforce, we were used to having men working, and women wanted to compete with men. In order to get an equal footing, they had to present themselves cheaper and a better bargain. It's supply and demand. Men come to the workplace, and women want to compete with men, so women have to say, I can do that job, and they are willing to take less. What women have to do Time. is present their value and not take less. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> Michael Brown. Well, you know, I, I reject the question because in some jobs, women get paid the same or more. Other jobs, women get paid less than men. It, it's all based on all these reasons that all three of these gentlemen have given. So. What's wrong with the country is we throw out a broad question like that and we expect some politician to give an answer of yes or no. That's BS. But they it depends are paid on the less. job. They in are, some jobs they are, no, in, in other jobs, jobs they're not. In it most depends. jobs. In okay. most jobs. Uh, if, in, if, in, if in most jobs women are paid less. They are. Hang on, hang on. If in most jobs women are paid less, the, hang on. If in most jobs women are paid less, then businessmen would hire almost all, all women. women because they're less expensive. Yet, they don't do so. Is it discrimination? I don't think so. I think there's other factors. Now, the, the population is mostly Time. women. Time. Time. They, can, they can take control I don't think it's true that they don't hire women. No, they do hire women. I'll take cheap women any time. I take cheap women all the time, too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Final I lightning know. round. I even go there. Final lightning round question. And we thank you, gentlemen, for, for being up here. What if we don't leave? <laughs> you Did I mention down. Denver police Security. are here? Please, guys, come and get me. Brownie, for the we'll love start. Of God, come and get me. <laughs> Brownie, we'll, do, we'll start with you. Who is your favorite radio host today, and you cannot vote for yourself? <laughs> um, God. No, I mean, I like Rush, and I like Beck, and I listen to all those guys. But I probably get the most enjoyment out of listening to Don Imus. Okay. Norm Goldman. Well, it's a tie between David Sirota and Ed Schultz. Okay. Caldera. The NPR host of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom. Peter Boyles. Hey! <laughs> That's a pretty good segue. Uh, with that, we will conclude round one. Gentlemen, you can stand up. Folks, give them a hand. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you.